Hey, this is um, my um, presentation on um, the cell cycle and mitosis. This is chapter six in your OpenStax book. Uh, by the end of this uh, presentation, you should be able to describe the processes which occur in each part of the cell cycle and describe how the cell produces more body cells through uh, mitosis. So mitosis is basically asexual reproduction. So uh, there's no sex involved. It's just making more of yourself. Uh, so you do this every day. So, you know, you started out as an egg and then you reproduce, you not reproduce, but you copied yourself, copied yourself. And so you are now, you know, millions of cells. Um, and so every time you, you replicate a cell, you are actually making an exact copy of yourself. Um, so you don't want any, um, you don't want any mutations or anything in the DNA. Um, and the cycle of growth and repli uh, replication is known as the cell cycle. Um, and so, uh, during this cycle, the cell undergoes a series of precisely timed and carefully controlled stages of growth, DNA replication, and finally cell division. The results in the reproduction are two identical daughter cells. So the exact same copy of DNA. You don't want any mistakes in the DNA. Uh, so the cell cycle has two major phases. Um, you have mitosis and cytokinesis is one phase. And then this phase is considered to be interphase. Um, and this phase is really preparing the cell to go into mitosis. Um, <clears throat> so interphase is what where the cell spends most of its time. And um, it occurs between cell division. So this is where the cell divides right here. Um, so during interphase, the cell grows in size and its DNA is replicated. That happens right here in this S phase, right? This is the S phase, synthesis phase. And then during the mitotic phase, the DNA, the replicated DNA and the mitotic cytoplasmic contents are separated in the cell divide. That happens up here. So we're going to go over that in this presentation. Um, so when a cell is not undergoing cell division, it is said to be an interphase. Um, although it is referred to as cells resting stage, it's actually a very active period. So during this time, the cell carries out all its usual functions, such as respiration and all these proteins, all the proteins are doing their work, as well as growing and developing into mature functioning cell. There are three subphases in uh, interphase. So this is G1. This is for growth and normal metabolic role. So this is kind of normal. Um, this is um, where the DNA replicates, which we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And then this is growth and preparation for mitosis. So this is when like all your organelles would, um, would copy their cells and your mitochondria would copy your cells and you need extra ATP and all this other stuff that happens here. Okay, so we're gonna go over that a little bit. Um, so this is talking about G1, which is right here, this G1 right here. So this is the first growth phase. Um, the cell grows in the amount of cytoplasm and, cell, and the cell organelles increase. So here is where you're gonna start replicating your organelles. Also referred to as the first gap, since from a microscope viewpoint, little can be visibly observed. Um, so, at, but this is actually uh, highly active biochemically. It's accumulating the building blocks to make more DNA. So it's going to accumulate those nucleotides that are the A, C, T's, and G's, right? So that's what it's going to accumulate. And the proteins that's used for doing that. And it's also going to build up necessary energy reserves. That would be in the form of ATP in order to copy uh, the DNA. Okay, so the S phase is where the cell undergoes replication. And here the DNA makes an exact copy of a cell in a stepwise process, which is controlled by lots and lots of different proteins. The diagram on the next slide gives a brief overview of DNA replication. So this is in the S phase, right? So this is the original DNA. It's double-stranded, and it's usually in a helix, but this is just showing it straight. 
and the A attaches to T and the C uh, always you know, complementary base pairs are A, T and C and G. And these are held together by weak hydrogen bonds. So those weak hydrogen bonds can unzip. And then this one is going to, the complementary uh, nucleotides are going to come in here. A goes to T, C goes to G. And then you're going to have, this should be exactly the same as the parent. And this is the other strand, but you can see these strands are different, right? So this has an A and this is a T, but these are the complements for that, right? And then eventually if you complement that, this is actually the same as the original. Um, so it does make two exact copies. Um, so, um, So this is when your DNA is going to double, basically. So the human body normally has 46 chromosomes, and after this S phase, it has 92. So this is a little bit um, misleading because actually the, the DNA is not in chromosomes. It's still in chromatin. So it's kind of like that loose spaghetti, right? So if it wasn't in a chromosome, those things are tightly packed, and there there's proteins that hold them together and everything like that. So when the so when the DNA is in is in a chromosome, you cannot copy it. So it says it has 92 chromosomes, but it really has 92 pairs of the genes. Um, but it still is in chromatin. And I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show you this video here in a minute. Um, and this is also a little bit misleading. Is if it folds up, it would be a chromosome, but it's not folded up. It's in chromatin. So this one you get from your mom, this one you get from your dad, and then it's going to make a copy of them, right? So it's going to copy all the genes that are in this one. It's going to make an exact copy over here. The same thing with your mom. The one you get for your mom, it's going to make an exact copy. And these are sister chromatids. But you actually can't see these chromosomes during the S phase. And the centromere actually holds them together. Um, so... Uh, so DNA is actually anti-parallel. So it's so those two strands are parallel, but they're actually flipped. And that's where you get this five prime and three prime. And here you get the five prime and three prime. And you get that five prime here by the, by the number of carbons in this sugar, right? This is a sugar. And this is the phosphate head. This is the backbone, right? So you have the ribose sugar and the phosphate head is the backbone. And then these are the nucleotides that are held together by weak hydrogen bonds. But you actually get this five prime end by counting the number of carbons in this sugar. So the first carbon comes off of the nitrogenous base. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So at this end, you have the five prime sugar is closest to the end, right? And then you have one, two, three. The three prime is at the bottom, right? And if you go down here, one, two, three, this is the three prime carbon, and this is at the bottom, right? So the five prime sugar is closest to the phosphate head. So here, here you have the five prime here, right? So that would be one, two, three, four, five. The five prime sugar is at this end. And one, two, three, the three prime sugar is at that, or the three prime carbon, I'm sorry, is at that end. So you can see they're opposite, right? So they're parallel, but they're opposite. And that has um, some ramifications. And so this is actually, a, I'm going to show you a video of this in a minute. But um, so this is showing you the three prime and the five prime ends, right? So this is the five prime end, if you follow this right? This is the three prime end over here. And then this will be the three prime end and that's the five prime end. And what's going to happen is this is, um, this is going to unravel it, right? So this, this is a, this is a uh, protein. It's going to unravel it. And then this helicase is actually going to break those hydrogen bonds between these complementary base pairs, those weak hydrogen bonds. And then um, you can only add nucleotides to the five prime end, right? So this is considered the leading strand and the five prime end is here. So as this unravels, you can actually keep adding those complementary base pairs. So this is called the leading strand because this one is very straightforward and there's lots of proteins 
associated with this. But this is DNA polymerase. This is the one that actually adds the uh, complementary base pairs here, that adds the new nucleotides. So this is the leading strand. This is very straightforward. This one, on the other hand, is considered the lagging strand. And you can only add, um, this is the three prime end, right? So you can't add nucleotides at this end because you can only add nucleotides at the five prime end. So the five prime end is here. So what you actually have to do is you have to backstitch it, right? So here is where it's going to prime it. And then you're, this, is, this would be an Okasaki fragment right here. So you're backstitching it here. And, um, and and it might kind of makes these loops and then it back stip stitches. And then this is the protein that actually stitches the back stitches together. So um, hopefully that was pretty clear. And I'm gonna show you a video of this and hopefully it'll work. And this is an HHMI video. Why is it not coming up? Okay, so this is the HeLa case. This is the HeLa case right here, right? This is the um, the the DNA that's going to get replicated, right? And here it's splitting. So this is going to be the leading strand, right? And this is added to the five. The five prime end is is down here, and this is where it's going to make those Okasaki fragments. So you can see it's going to back stitch it this way because the five prime end is actually over here. So this is this is making an Okasaki fragment here, and this is um, DNA polymerase. This is the polymerase right here that's going to actually add the nucleotides. So here is the single strand, and here it's copied. Here's the single strand, and here it's back copying it. You are looking at the something. The DNA to be copied. So this is the HeLa case, right? And this is the leading strand. Here's the single uh, strand of DNA that's going to get copied, and here it's copied, and here it's doing the back the the back stitching. It spins the DNA as fast as a jet engine as it unwinds the double helix into two strands. One strand is copied continuously and can be seen spooling off to the right. Things are not so simple for the other strand because it must be copied backwards. It is drawn out repeatedly in loops and copied one section at a time. The end result is two. Okay, so that, that is basically explaining this right here. That's what that's explaining. So you have the, okay. So that's, so basically in the S phase, it gets um, replicated. That's what happens in the S phase. And then the G2 is during the G2 phase, the cell replenishes its, its energy stores in preparation for cell division or mitosis. And it makes copies of its organelles and other substances and dismantles its cytoskeleton to provide necessary resources for mitosis. So they think these um, cyt it, it, these are all proteins. The cytoskeleton is all proteins, but they it breaks down and actually makes the spindle fibers. And then when it's not doing mitosis, it goes back to the cytoskeleton. And then once the these final preparations have been made, the cell will enter the mitotic phase. Okay, so these are the questions. So um, name the subphases of interphases in order. That would be gap one, S. This is where the DNA gets copied. 
And then this is where um, you're getting everything ready to go into mitosis. And this is what they mean. And that's a simple diagram, an oversimple diagram. I would expect you to do more than that. Um, and so this is the centromere that um, this is where the spindle fibers are going to be attached. And this is what holds those two sister chromatids together. Okay, once interphase has concluded and the cell enters the mitotic phase, the cell enters the mitotic phase of the cell division. Um, so um, there's two steps, really, mitosis and cytokinesis. Some people separate them and some people put this cytokinesis in the same category as um, telophase. So mitosis only occurs in eukaryotic cells, um, plant, animal, and fungi, and that's because they have a membrane-bound nucleus. Um, the nucleus in the cell divides into two, with each having identical ide genetic material. So you're cloning, basically. Um, the second step of the mitotic phase is cytokinesis. During cytokinesis, the cytoplasm of the cell divides into two new cells called daughter cells. Each daughter cell receives one of the two nuclei, so it looks exactly the same. And these are the phases, right? So you have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Um, so in prophase, the chromosomes are going to condense. And this is where it moves from chromatin to chromosomes, right? So this is where the chromosomes are going to get coiled up and sort of packaged. And so it's easier, it's really hard to separate a bowl of spaghetti, but it's much easier to package and separate uh, chromosomes when they're sort of packaged up. Um, so meanwhile, the nucleolus, which makes ribosomes, and the nuclear membrane will disappear. And the centrioles divide, right? So here's the centrioles, and they're going to actually go to each pole. So here it shows the centriole at each pole. And the spindle fibers are going to start to appear. And these are the spindle fibers. And I, um, these were once the cytoskeleton, and they think those proteins actually get reused here. And, but these are also proteins. And eventually they're gonna get attached to the centromeres of the um, sister chromatids. And so this is sort of showing it here. So you can see the centrioles at either side and then the um, centromeres are these tiny pink dots. So around those centromeres are the sister chromatids. So it's everything's getting sort of ready to go. And this is metaphase, and this is when the chromosomes line up, or the sister chromatids, or whatever you want to call them, are lined up here in the middle. And the spindle fibers are, spindle fibers are now attached to these uh, sister chromatids, right? So um, that's what this looks like. So you can see the, um, the centromeres are right here. I mean, the... This, what did I just call them? The centrioles, I'm sorry. Okay, so the, um, you can see the centrioles right here, right? So, um, and these are the spindle fibers that are getting formed. And here you can see that those sister chromatids are actually in the middle because those pink things are the centromeres that hold those sister chromatids together. So this is an example of metaphase. And then uh, anaphase is actually when these spindle fibers, they're going to start to retract and it, they, they kind of get pulled back this way. And um, they're going to pull a sister chromatid to each side. So each cell now is going to have an equal, the same exact copy of DNA. So things can also go wrong here. So if these don't separate right, the things can go wrong here. Um, so, uh, and the division of cytoplasm begins and the cell membrane begins to pinch inwards in the center called a cleavage furrow. So you really can't see that furrow there, but it's gonna go right there. On here, you can see the cleavage furrow here, right? So this now has pulled those sister chromatids back, pulled those sister chromatids back. These spindle fibers are now gonna go back to being cytoskeleton. And this is where the cell is gonna divide right here. 
And then the last one is a telophase. So there's where the spindle fibers break down and they go back to the cytoplasm. A new nuclear membrane appears and you'll have the nucleolus reappear. And these are the new chromosomes and they're gonna go back to chromatin. Um, and so they're, they're gonna unwind, right? So you're not gonna, you're not gonna have chromosomes anymore. So you can't really copy them when they're all wound, wound up. And if you have to make a protein, you have to copy a section of, of the protein, of the DNA. Okay. And this is telophase. And so here you can see the cleavage and um, it's gonna start making its own cell. And then uh, this is cytokinesis. Um, so the division of the cytoplasm is almost complete. The cleavage furrow becomes deeper and the cell finally divides in two. Two new cells are formed with the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. And again, this is back into chromatin again. So it, the chromosomes unwind. Okay, so name the four phases of mitosis in order. So that is, um, so that is a prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Briefly, say briefly what happens in four of those. And during cytokinesis is when the cell actually divides. So that is it for this um, for this lecture.